Okay, welcome back. In this video, I want to talk about uh, unit vectors in 3D space. So when we're studying force vectors that are in a three-dimensional coordinate system, there are certain unit vectors that we associate with each one of the components in the x direction, the y direction, the z direction, and the direction of the force vector itself. So that's what I want to get to in this video. But to start, I want to start off with how we've been looking at unit vectors in the two-dimensional space. So if you can just ignore this diagram off to the right, we're gonna focus on here for a minute. And when we draw a force vector in the two-dimensional space, we know that there are components of that force vector along the x-axis as well as the y-axis. And both of those components, f of x and f of y, have unit vectors associated with them. So in the x direction, you'll have this unit vector i. And in the y direction, you'll have something similar. And that is the unit vector j. Now we know that the magnitude of i is equal to 1 and the magnitude of j is also equal to 1. But when we get into three-dimensional space, we again, we have this third component. And in this case, it's the z-axis. And the unit vector that we use for the z-axis is k. And that has also a unit uh, magnitude of 1, right? They're all unit vectors. Now, these unit vectors indicate the direction of those force components. So in the case of a two-dimensional force vector here, I is going to indicate the direction of the f of x component, and j is going to indicate the direction of the f of y component. But as I mentioned when we were talking about the three-dimensional space, there's also a fourth unit vector, and that unit vector is the character lambda. Now, lambda, just like any other unit vector, has a magnitude of 1. And what's special about this uh, unit vector lambda is that it's not in a particular direction like i and j are for the x and the y axes. Instead, it goes along the line of action of the force vector that we're looking at. So i, j, and k are specific to the axes x, y, and z, and lambda is specific to the line of action of the force. So again, I want to talk about these three different unit vectors as well as this lambda uh, unit vector. And I want to talk about how lambda relates to the direction cosines as well as the direction angles that we've been studying in the last couple of videos. So let's jump over into 3D land. And typically when we have some sort of a force in three-dimensional space, I've, I've sort of drawn this blue three-dimensional box here just so you could see that the force vector that we're studying uh, is in fact three-dimensional. So I'm gonna draw that force vector from the origin to this corner of this box. And this is our force vector in three-dimensional space. Now, typically, we can represent this force vector f in terms of its components, fx, fy, and fc. So I could say that, well, the x component is the scalar quantity f of x times the unit vector i plus the scalar quantity of f of y times the unit vector j plus f of z times the unit vector k. And so you can see that each one of these force vector components is along one of the axes. So f of x would be this component right here, and then f of y would be this component right here, and then f of z would be this component right here. So if you added f of x plus f of y plus f of z, you would see that, well, you started at the tip of f and you ended at the tail of f. So these three force components, uh, vectors, if you add them together, you get the force vector f. Now, when we introduce the direction angles for all three of these components here, so again, direction angles are our theta x, our theta y, and our theta z values. From previous videos, you know that the x component is going to be equal to f, the magnitude of the force vector f, times the cosine of theta x times i. And then the same thing for f of y. It's going to be the magnitude of f times the cosine 
of theta y in the j direction plus uh, f times the cosine of theta z in the k direction. And so going back into the 2D space right here, uh, we're going to be flip-flopping between 3D and 2D quite a bit. Uh, but if we get back to the 2D space, we know that we can represent any force component of this force vector f in terms of its scalar quantity and its unit vector, just like we've been doing uh, right here. So in the case of the f of x vector, which is this component right here, we can say that f of x is equal to f of x, the component or the scalar value of f of x, times the unit vector i. Now, this right here, this is the scalar quantity of the f of x vector. And this right here is the unit vector uh, for f of x. Now, when we translate this definition into the 3D space, we can see that in this equation right here, we have this common f value here in all three terms, so we can factor out that term. And if we do that, we get f times cosine theta x times the unit vector i plus cosine theta y times the unit vector j plus cosine theta z times the unit vector k. And this, again, is just equal to f. So very similar to this definition, you can sort of see that this some force vector here is equal to its scalar quantity times this term right here. And so in three-dimensional space, this right here is the scalar. And this right here, this entire term, is a unit vector. But this is a unit vector in three-dimensional space. And so in short, we could say that f is equal to the magnitude of f times this big unit vector here, which we call, in three-dimensional space, we call lambda. So f is equal to f times lambda, just like f of x was equal to the scalar quantity of f of x times the unit vector i. Now what's important to remember is that lambda, just like i, j, and k, it has a magnitude of 1. It's just a unit vector. But specifically, lambda always acts along the line of that force vector in three-dimensional space. And this lambda unit vector is, again, just a vector. And just like any vector, it has components along the x, y, and z axes. And so those components are, of course, this cosine theta x, cosine theta y, cosine theta z. So I'm going to rewrite lambda right here. And I'll say that lambda is equal to cosine theta x times the unit vector i plus cosine theta y times the unit vector j plus cosine theta z times the unit vector k. So you can see that the components of lambda are in fact equal to the direction cosines of this force. Okay, so now let's start diving a little bit deeper into this lambda unit vector. So back in my 3D diagram, and I'll draw this or zoom this in a little bit, we know that this force vector f has three components. The first one is this f of x component, which is right here. This is f of x times the unit vector i. And then it has this y component right here. And this is f of y times the unit vector j. And then, of course, f of z right here times the unit vector k. Now, this lambda vector right here, this lambda unit vector, it also has three components, cosine theta x, cosine theta y, and cosine theta z. So if I go back up to this uh, diagram right here, I'm going to draw that unit vector in in a different color. Unit vector uh, lambda acts along the line of action of f. So right there, I'm going to say that this is our lambda unit vector. It just has a magnitude of 1, and it points along this line of action of f. Now, just like I did for the big force vector here, um, I'm going to draw in a little box here so you can see that this is, in fact, three-dimensional. 
Okay, so hopefully that isn't uh, too hard to see. The main point is that there's this three-dimensional box here, and this unit vector starts at the origin, and it goes from one corner of that box all the way to the opposite quarter on the other side, right there. So there's the start, there's the ending. Okay, so just like f had components along the x, y, and z axes, this unit vector lambda also has components along the x, the y, and the z axis. So those, again, of course, they are this cosine theta x, this cosine theta y, and cosine theta z. So those vectors are going to be right here. This is cosine theta x in the i, this is cosine theta y in the y direction, and this is cosine theta z in the z direction. Now the scalar quantities of each one of these three unit vectors are going to be something, uh, something similar to this. So I'll just do it here. I'll say that lambda x, the scalar quantity of lambda x, is equal to the magnitude of lambda times cosine theta x. And for lambda y, this is equal to the magnitude of lambda times cosine theta y. And then for lambda z, that's equal to the magnitude of lambda times cosine theta z. Now, what's interesting is that the magnitude of lambda is equal to just one. So this sort of simplifies down to just being cosine theta x. This is just cosine theta y, and this is just cosine theta z. Awesome. So again, these are the scalar quantities of the components of this unit vector lambda. Okay, so those are the scalar quantities of the lambda components. Now, you also have to remember that just like the uh, force vectors that we've been studying, the sum of the squares of a vector's component must be equal to the square of the vector itself. So in other words, what I'm saying is that the square of the sum of the components, so f of x squared plus f of y squared plus f of z squared must be equal to the square of the vector itself, so of f um, itself, f squared. And so you will get an equation that looks like this. f is equal to the square root of f of x squared plus f of y squared plus f of z squared. So if we translate that to our unit vector lambda, we get something like this. We have lambda is equal to lambda x squared plus lambda y squared plus lambda z squared. And I forgot the square here. I'm not going to take the square root of both sides, and you'll see in a second why. Uh, for this equation, we know that the magnitude of lambda uh, is 1. So this term right here is actually just 1. So I can rewrite this as 1 is equal to lambda x squared plus lambda y squared plus lambda z squared. And what were these quantities, lambda x, lambda y, and lambda z? Well, we found those out here. Lambda x is cosine theta x, so we can start substituting these values into this equation right here. And what we get is 1 is equal to cosine uh, theta x squared plus cosine of theta y squared plus cosine of theta z squared. And there is our equation. Okay, so why is this useful? So remember that these direction angles tell us the orientation of this force vector f in space. So if the components of f are given, if we already know the components of this force vector f, we can use these equations to figure out the direction cosines. How do we do that? Well, if we know that f of x is equal to f times cosine of theta x, I can rewrite this as cosine theta x is equal to f of x over the magnitude of f. And so if we ever wanted to figure out what this theta x value was, we could just take the arctangent of this equation on both sides and we can solve for uh, theta x. So similarly, we could say that f of y is equal to f times cosine of theta y. And if we rewrite this, we get cosine of theta y 
is equal to f of y over f, and for z, we'll do something similar, just like this. So now we have equations for these direction cosines.